Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. How can I incorporate fasting into my routine outside of Ramadan? How can I incorporate fasting into my routine outside of Ramadan? There are many uh, sunnah fasts or nafil fasts that we could engage in and it begins immediately after Ramadan with the six days of Shawwal. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, من أتبع من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه بست من شوال كان كسيام الدهر أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. Whoever so fasts the month of Ramadan and then follows it up with fasting the six days of Shawwal, which could be fasted consecutively and successively immediately after Eid, and it could also be fasted sporadically throughout the month of Shawwal. That person would attain the reward of fasting the entire year. So this is the first uh, the first practice that we are afforded outside of Ramadan. And then of course, the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is to fast every Monday and every Thursday. He would mention والسلام, in various ahadith that he fasts on a Monday because that's the day in which he was born. وسلم, and he would also mention that he fasts on the Mondays and on, on the Thursdays because these are the days in which our deeds are presented to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the week. You have a weekly uh, presentation of deeds, you have a daily presentation of deeds, you also have a monthly and a yearly presentation of deeds. So because this was the habit of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it becomes highly emphasized for us also, or rather highly uh, important for us also to emulate that sunnah. And finally, the Prophet sallallahu had a regular habit of fasting the three lunar days, the three white days of the month. What are the three white days? They are the days in which the moon is basically at its biggest. So the 13th, 14th and 15th of the lunar month or the 14th, 15th and 16th of the lunar month. And of course, uh, many scholars would emphasize that, look, if you cannot fast those three days and you cannot fast Mondays and Thursdays regularly, then at least one should strive to fast three days for the month. Now, bearing in mind that fasting beyond Ramadan is not obligatory, whether it be the fasting of Muharram, whether it be the fasting of the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, whether it be Shawwal or Sha'ban, there's no obligatory fasting except the fasting of Ramadan and fasting that was vowed. The evidence for this in the Shafi'i school is the fact that an A'rabi, a Bedouin, once came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he, he asked him, you know, what should I do? In other words, what aspect of deen should I regard as the most important? And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, indicated to pray five times a day, to give zakah, to fast the month of Ramadan, to perform hajj, etc. What we consider to be the five pillars of Islam. And each time the Bedouin would ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is there any more that I should do? In other words, pray the five daily salahs, okay, but is there any more that I must do? And the Prophet alayhi wa would answer each time and say, no, except that you do supererogatory acts of worship, so voluntary acts of worship. So in light of this hadith, the Shafi'i school often relies on it because it provides us with the paradigm of what is fard and what is not fard, right? What is not fard could either be uh, a sunnah mu'akkada, it could be your regular sunnah, or it, it could merely be permissible. However, what is fard is clear. So it is not necessary per se to fast outside of the month of Ramadan, illa an tatawa, except that you do extra voluntary deeds for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is of course praiseworthy and there are tremendous rewards attached to it. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is not as a means of discouragement towards the questioner to say, you know, don't fast outside of Ramadan. No, that's not the point at all. We should all strive to do extra. However, don't place such a burden on yourself whereby you, you sort of coerce yourself into doing something that might break you. Right? No one makes the deen difficult upon himself or herself except that the deen would break them. So if you can, start slow, be gradual, be consistent, one step at a time. For example, instead of going for the Mondays and Thursdays and the white days of the month and all of the special days throughout the year, start with one day a month. 
for example. Once you find that you, you can be consistent with one day a month for three months or so, then you perhaps increase to two days a month and then perhaps to three days a month. And perhaps you are more um, eager to, you know, sort of build momentum on this, on this act of worship and you can decide I'm going to fast on Mondays, for example. And by being gradual and by being consistent, you would find that you become accustomed to the amount of, uh, of worship that you've decided upon. And you can then easily transition into increasing that for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever you feel that, you know, it's become a bit too much for you so that you're actually slipping back and you're not doing that which is obligatory upon you, then you know I need to cut back on my voluntary worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah